Oh boy. Yeah, I, I, I'm in a deep appreciation here. Uh, I'm at my new work table where not only many podcasts will be made, but artworks. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you about that in a moment. But um, I am feeling an appreciation once again towards those amazing luminaries who, um, I don't know, I'm a difficult guy to convince, but uh, the convincing power of the luminaries it knows no bounds, apparently, because the tables here, the uh, studio is just so completely altered and workable and comfortable and convivial to the pursuit of appreciation. And here we are again on the Overnightscape Underground and on YouTube or wherever else this may have uh, manifested itself and reached your ears. We are here. And uh, we're, we're progressing somehow. I haven't done a show now. This might be the longest gap between shows since we started this adventure together. But uh, the, the time was well spent in putting this together, and we had a great Overnight Scape Central yesterday where we went over the first volume of the Beatles Anthology. So if that piques your interest and you didn't catch that, that uh, at this point is not found on YouTube, but you do have to wander over to O-N-S-U-G. Dot com, the Overnight Scape Underground, which uh, I heavily promote here because that's been my home for many years. If you uh, go to the tags column on the right-hand side and scroll down to PQ, there's like more PQ Ribber. Uh, that's me. You, you, some of you know me as Brett, and, and we're working towards being Brett again because, uh, as I've explained, uh, I, I'm more of a Brett than a PQ Ribber. To begin with, I'm not sure what I was doing when I uh, started that. I don't trying. It's the idea that I would be known or notorious or even make a living doing this sort of thing. I mean, Frank's talked about it. At one point, he really thought he was. Going And I, I thought the same thing. Oh, um, people are going to hear me and uh, sponsors and big doings. And that, that doesn't happen to uh, many. And perhaps I'm not that kind of a guy. I don't have that all or nothing drive for that. Uh, however, uh, the all or nothing drive when it hits someone, it's, it's pretty intense, I have to say. And that is really what I, the crest, I'm on the crest of this wave and just riding this wanting to, at this age, not stop, but to go, 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 go. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And that's the basic idea. Um, over this past weekend, I did a performance at the local art hop here in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. I played my guitar and sang songs. But uh, more significantly, I uh, played along with a new audio collage that I've done. Some of you are probably unfamiliar with that facet of my work. And the audio collage I did is a half hour long. And I'm realizing that's unduly laborious unless somebody signed up for it and on a tr set of transmissions like this might even drive people to not listen or to skip through it so what i am going to do uh, perhaps over several episodes is play bits of it just to give you an idea because i see this as sort of an audio poem uh, what i have done is carefully and slowly curated various short clips of people saying things, old radio, a lot of overnightscape underground hosts, almost anything uh, that I feel isn't so copyrighted that if I used it for any reason, we'll get a horde of lawyers and attorneys. Um, a band, well, we're going to talk about Negative Land and the Over the Edge show probably a little later in this program because although I've mentioned it before, uh, 
the archive of it and just listening to these shows. Um, they really had this feel, a deep feel for experimental radio, taking sounds and altering them, what they would call culture jamming, which they did on a number of their albums, Negative Land did. Notably, uh, many of you may have heard of when they got the band U2 rather um, involved in litigation. In fact, I just about destroyed everybody in the band's life to have done it. Uh, they took uh, a sample of a U2 song and messed with it and released an EP called U2, and then negative land in smaller letters on the bottom. And some I, U2 claims that they had nothing to do with it, that their corporate lawyers told them, just went ahead and did it, and maybe even misrepresented what was happening there, that somebody was using their name. And let's face it, um, I don't think that record, just because it had U2 on it, sold very many copies. I don't think any record store put it in with the other records with Bono and The Edge. I just, but nonetheless, a heavy lawsuit was filed against them and just raising the money to defend themselves and all of that controversy just harmed them in a great way. And since then, at least from my understanding, U2 has expressed regret or have made excuses. And Negative, di Negative Land did eventually go on. And even the Over the Edge show still goes on with Wobbly, uh, another member of the band, one of the, he's just an incredible guy, uh, at the helm. And it's still on Pacifica Radio, as far as I know. But these old shows of that program, you see, I told you I would talk about it later, but I talked about it now, because that's another thing. Uh, I have been an epic procrastinator, saying I'm going to do this, and then putting it off, or just doing a little bit, and then... But more and more, if I get an idea in my head, uh, bringing it to some sort of fruition, or at least making a real try, as opposed to just saying I want to do something, and I don't know, I think just willing it into being will happen, and that, that simply isn't so. Um, let's uh, take a moment here, and I am going to play you uh, the intro, uh, well actually probably what you're hearing now, is a sound effect intro that will lead in to uh, the beginning of uh, this audio collage. Uh, they were all doing the same stuff, all those goodies. <sighs> Makes me sleepy just to think about it. Oh, you'd be surprised at that. Nobody talks about that. Well, then pull the shade down. I don't associate with most of those people, so I don't know. I'm stupid. The sooner the better. I didn't laugh, but I sure as hell wanted to, man. So virtuous and magnificent. For the actual satellite, satellite channel and audio channels that we use to record it on. So it's some risky business time. <laughs> Just a huge mess. Will you go away? Thank you. Some people didn't even know <laughs> know what it was. I'm like, how did you not know about the Wienermobile? You should be allowed to go and conduct it. And of course, the landlord has the right to refuse you a lease. She's Sid Charisse's niece. Hey, go ahead. It's your story. You know, I've been in so many fights in the saloons. I don't think anything can hurt me no more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, let's see. For whatever reason, that's the way it was. In my, uh, what, I guess my mid to late 20s. I'll never forget how hot that summer was. We must have passed through some sort of space war. Uh, I don't know quite how to uh, bring this one. Then we had a gigantic. It's, 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 it's got an interesting sound. All right, is it, is it working? I can't get it out of my head. Your alarm clock will go off. Weird. I'm a liar. And a fool. No, 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 no. 
I'm talking about the kind that says, My parents must have thought I was crazy. Gooey bites. You gotta understand what man is, and if you do, you can't help but laugh. I'm, I'm, I'm sensitive to certain sounds. and I used to say that a lot. In color. Well, there are two who are willing. I'm not strange. I am strange. I, I, I don't want to say I'm not strange. Maybe you'll get just the button that you need. You know, the little moose, maybe, or, or goofy, or beezy. Well, I'd say about five years. Mom, can I have a pony? I'm Jimbo. I can do whatever I want to do because I'm Jimbo. And that's the, that's the kind of person Jimbo is. Ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Do you expect to be staying long? Or it can be buried in the backyard. Oh, I hope not. This here's Jimbo. There seems to be a great controversy. I got the great granddaddy of all headache. So he said... Have you heard any good Geiger counters lately? Better stick to the ones you own. The latest dodge of the lads in the lookout for easy money is to hold up a Geiger counter until any old used bricks make like solid uranium. That is just scary. So there's a, there's a whole dynamic there between the whole social thing as well. You'll find out. Made in Germany. You own them, they do not own you. I don't know if I should light up now while I'm doing this. At one point, it was so common. Always a mixed bag of stuff there. And boy, oh boy, oh boy. Ah, uh, Vic is so easily flattered. All right, that should be better. <clears throat> okay. Buff Orpingtons. What? Buff Orpingtons. Where's his wife? We didn't have one. Thank you for your cooperation. I love how they're thanking people for cooperation that hasn't been given yet. Now, at this point, you're either saying, I'm glad that's over. I hope he never does that again. Or uh, perhaps, I don't even know, because I remember when I sort of started doing this. It was uh, less just voice samples. I used a lot of music samples and just random sounds. And it's something, it's like collecting sound and then scrambling it. And the more I scramble it right now, I put, I have this huge archive. And Jimbo, when he was still with us, helped me create this archive. And it's, it takes a lot of time. You go through something, or if you're really conscious when you're watching films or television or listening to other podcasts or programs, when you hear something, you at the very least mark down the time on whatever file you're listening to or program you're listening to or movie, and you go back and you grab it. And uh, this could be done by somebody with a lot more focus than me to such precision and actually construct something consciously. But these uh, juxtapositions of uh, sound, I use a random function on... Uh, an audio program, Winamp, which they made years ago and I still work with, uh, just because it has that random function and when it kicks out random bits, it you don't get any little clicks or uh, extra delays or fade-ins and fade-outs. And the, the sound effects I curate from a number of places, but archive.org has uh, field recordings, and a number of those are in the public domain. Not that, I mean, I can't imagine somebody recording some outdoor field recording sound and being able to recognize it underneath one of these. And as far as fair use with even samples of, say, uh, I get a sample of the Beatles talking and made collages out of that. I wonder if that's actually litigable. However, um, the surviving, uh, well, yeah, the surviving Beatles, Yoko, and uh, whatever other lawyers they have uh, who own the rights might still, still give it a shot just to scare off people. I don't know. Perhaps I do tend to worry about things and consequences that are absolutely ridiculous. Um, 
I don't know. It's it's it, I, more and more. I'm feeling more of a go for it attitude. So as time goes on, uh, these audio collages could get very interesting. But the one thing that I have decided, I, I used to see how long an audio collage I could do, and somewhere there are a couple of old cassettes with ninety minute long collages that I did. And that's not doable, really, for anybody, even somebody who is amused or likes this sort of thing. So I'm thinking more along the length of what we just heard, four minutes, five minutes tops, maybe even ones that are as short as three minutes, because too short and it just doesn't feel like it's taking effect and taking hold to me. But you'll you be the judge, and I'm very curious if anybody uh, has any comment or ideas. I mean, you can take this idea. I, I don't feel it's like my own, and if somebody else, I mean, when Jimbo did a few of these, I was flattered. If anybody else decided to take this and make it their own, I mean, for me, the height of doing this came earlier this year, where a local artist and curator and gallery owner, Hieronymus. Boggs, B-O-G-S, who's also a fabulous musician and singer. He invited me to perform in this kind of a strange art festival, and I mixed one of these live. That's on YouTube on the same channel as these programs, and it's a half hour long. And also with the sound effects, I had instrumental music bits of music that I've done, which in this particular second one, I decided that if there was going to be music, it would be added live, because I was intending, and I may still perform this. In fact, that's we're getting back around to my art hop performance where I played guitar and sang. I'm really thinking, unless I somehow become part of a band again, that is about the end of me doing solo music concerts. It just doesn't feel, I, I don't have that drive. I, I have drives and I have things I want to do. And that's way down on the list of drives of PQ River at this point. Um, I, I want to travel. Uh, I may relocate at some point. And these are the things that I am working towards. Uh, and I want to artwork. Oh, 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 let me tell you about what I want to do art-wise, because uh, I did have a show cover with something I was working on. And um, again, the liminaries gave me this nut of an idea that I am now just not hesitating. I mean, we got part of why we got this big table is so I can work on much larger artworks. Um, huge is what I mean, as big as I can do. For starters, I am going to what they call an A3 size. And if there is, yeah, I guess A2 is double the size. That's how the A sizes, standard sizes of artwork work. Uh, but the bigger, the better. Um, I really feel that I tend to work in these little notebooks and that that came out of uh, just convenience and uh, doing artwork in cafes. You can't uh, take a drawing board with you. But uh, that necessity became something I'm too used to and too comfortable with. And something really big. At first, I was thinking that I couldn't do it. But the more I think about it, the more compelling the idea is. A little white tea is nice, by the way. I had to have a little sip there to cleanse. And, and that's the thing also. I, when I'm podcasting, tend to get in this rush and talk faster. And I certainly get to a point where the speed of my brain and the speed my mouth is capable of, and just the fact that thoughts can scramble up, turns into this, I don't even know how to describe it, but it can't be good. It, it really, pardon me, it really can't be good to, uh, to present things in that manner. 
Whereas I'm more, I'm more comfortable. Uh, and this feels more like I'm in the middle of the night. It's that magic time when everything else is quiet and you can groove on just strange thoughts and ideas, which again, uh, I'm listening more and more to the Overnightscape Underground and Frank Edward Nora in that night mode. And, and it feels so good. And the over the edge stuff, which is just when I, I I'm still thinking of doing these long form ex- appreciator shows, the big appreciation, something like that. But again, as a separate function, as opposed to the numbered series that uh, this is a part of, um, just uh, and give them each maybe a different name, the big appreciation, giant sized appreciation, and so forth. And uh, these multi hour ones uh, to get that over the edge feel. And let's let's just take a look here. Look here. Look now. Here now. Um, I'm going to go over to Wikipedia here, and we are going to see what they say about it, which is certainly clearer than. And of course, I'm not just going to read. I'm going to drivel along with. Um, Over the Edge is a sound collage radio program hosted and produced in the United States by John Lidecker, Wobbly, and Robert Cole, who took over in 2015, yes, after the death of longtime host Don Joyce. And Don Joyce is just the amazing guy. Um, Let's uh, talk about the format, because um, this is what Joyce was doing and what Wobbly continues to do um well it's uh it, it's a three-hour program it's uh founded in 1981 it's broadcast live on kpfa in berkeley california every second third and fourth thursday night into friday morning from midnight to 3 a.m and this is the interesting part and the magical part because these I do my stuff, and it's very calculated and cut up and recorded and then presented. He does these things live on the radio, which means, yes, if you listen in the archive, sometimes it really does not work. But the boldness of it makes even the shows where what he's doing it not working just kind of epic. On the rare occasions of a month with a fifth Thursday, the show runs an additional two hours from midnight to 5 a.m. And uh, the show's also available online, streamed live from KPFA, which means you, wherever you are, Thursday night into Friday morning, if you extrapolate the time, you can listen and participate when, well, we'll, we'll catch that. But uh, there, while uh, many Older episodes are available on NegativeLand.com, but as of July 2021, approximately 1,300 episodes are stored at the Internet Archive. Uh, That's just really remarkable. Um, And the format of the show, Joyce declared that with Over the Edge, he and his collaborators create direct reference collages, manipulating and mixing both found and original sounds to produce a new kind of audio animal. Over the Edge is always concerned with recycling existing cultural elements to some new unintended effect. Joyce used sound collage technique, weaving many sources together throughout the program to create a conversational form of audio presentation. Sources may include recordings of old radio programs, including old-time radio shows, commercials, talk shows, or news programs, portions of documentary films, songs, and more, all typically but not always related to a pre-selected theme. And yes, some of the themes that they would run, film, art, UFOs, UFO radio, they're just marvelous. And Joyce usually played a bit of unobtrusive background music and adds reverberation or other special effects uh, to sound sources, and also employs the circuit-bending oscillator created by uh, David Wills, who's also known as the Weatherman, also a member of Negative Land, and that creates all these electronic and synthesized tones. And it's just... Let's let's scroll down here to the receptacle programming part. 
The audience phone participation receptacle programming is another element of the format. Listeners are encouraged to call in and are placed on air, sometimes two or three at a time with no prior screening. Listeners can then play their own recordings for Over the Edge, offer commentary or non sequiturs, or less often, converse with Joyce. People are allowed to remain on the air as long as Joyce judges their contributions valuable from a few seconds to several minutes or more. The highly improvisational content and late hour of the broadcast attract a variety of colorful callers. How's that for a hyperbole? I, I like that hyperbole a lot. Uh, and here's what uh, Joyce said about uh, receptacle programming. Receptacle programming is there to deposit ideas and sounds from the real life, simultaneous life outside our broadcast studio. Real time participation allows a direct interaction with our mix as it is happening. Thus, musicians can join in with an over the phone instrument and follow our live beat or provide a reasonable, responsive bed for our elements. This, as we like to say, is best accomplished. You listen to this show on stereo headphones, tuned to KPFA when you call, and holding the telephone like a microphone, then the caller is in the mix. You hear your own real time sounds being broadcast along with their mix in headphones, stereo. And of course, people who don't understand that because there's no delay, there's feedback and other problems. Um, uh, Lidecker continues to present the show using that format and asks that callers try to use Skype and avoid calling in on their cell phones for better sound quality. And uh, it, he would even uh, develop these uh, personas, these different characters who would host different parts of the show. Really, um, as somebody who has listened to many, and certainly not all 1,300 of these shows, that would be daunting. I mean, I think I've listened to most of the Gene Shepard shows archived, but this is an archive that keeps giving rewards repeat listening. And again, you find that archive on archive.org, the Over the Edge radio show, and you have a beautiful, solid gold night listening experience that is it's simply unparalleled. Um, I, I, and I think if you're liking what the Overnight Scape Underground does and you like that audio collage I played in the... I think we're going to go out with just another little piece of audio collage of mine just because we've set that feel. And uh, yeah, uh, I appreciate Don Joyce. He is one of my radio heroes, and I hope he comes to be one of yours. And if not, I hope you uh, got something out of listening to me drivel on about such a great guy, because this is something the appreciator really, really appreciates in a a meaningful way. And uh, with that, uh, yeah, we're going to go out with some audio collage uh, more, and uh, throughout the next few programs, perhaps we will uh, continue the one half hour thing that I played in the streets of. T- can imagine this echoing through the streets of Truth or Consequences during an art hop and uh, set the controls for the heart of the fun. So, why are you thanking them? For me, it would have been, you know, it would have been different because it would have been a change. It would have been like a travel destination. You know, it would have been... And heavily salted. It's just so good. That king from Egypt, King Tut. The only reason they're re- they seem to be releasing this information now is because... Because I'm going to play golf. We're talking about the big mystery. Whatever. Of the one and only... Uh, the- It sounds easy, and it is. The most important school dance of the year is in two weeks. It would put out this uh, psychedelic goo, that's all I can tell you. It was kind of plastic, sort of. You're not being serious or anything, you know.
These have been devised by experts. The producers thank them for their assistance in the making of this documentary. Oh, I think I stretched that metaphor a bit much. Mind you. Oh. It may be just a few short weeks since our loved one died. Even when people go back. Remember, I didn't hear anything about this. Why pay more? Or if you climbed right out. The world is not only a plot against me, you are spearheading it. I want you to meet my wife. Or rather, my wife wants to meet you. Consider this remarkable datum. Of course, you can hang around the house and get boozed up if you want to. Crazy, see, <laughs> nearly kill me. You know, it's always been up there, looking.